Well, hello again out there, Friendship Village. This is your voice of Friendship Village coming at you today. And as I look out the window here in our studio, it looks gray and yucky. And But by the time you see, or not see, you're not going to see it, but you're, the time you'll hear our podcast, hopefully the sun will be out. We'll be just uh, warming ourselves in the in the great sunshine and having a good time. So here we are in the studio with our guest, Carol. I won't tell you the last name, but but you'll find out soon enough. And uh, but before we get into that business, we want to share with you who our sponsor is for this podcast, and it is the housekeeping housekeeping, housekeeping department. Oh. Now, if you've been around here very long, you know that we've added quite a few to the housekeeping unit, and they all seem to be doing a fine job, as far as I know, and friendly, friendly young ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Mary has a few more words to say about our housekeeping department. Yes, um, I'm very appreciative of what they do because that has taken the responsibility off of myself and many of the residents of not having to keep your house up anymore. They come in and do it for you. That's part of our plan when we come in. That One of the many services they provide for us and we are so, so appreciative of it. And I just happened to have mine clean this morning. Well, it looks very nice. Yeah, yes, it does. they do the vacuuming, they clean the floors, they do the bathrooms. And for me, they make my bed, change my bedding. That's kind of hard to, too. Yep. to do the bedding. and um, So they do a good job. They clean the countertops and the stove and just everything. I'm so, so appreciative of us as everyone is. And one of the things I like about our housekeeping unit is just their present, pleasant, pleasant manner. They always seem to have a nice smile and they greet you and... Uh, they just seem to enjoy the work that they do here. That's what I was going to so, say, too. They kind of enjoy what they're doing. Yeah, they don't so, make it so difficult. Yeah. Where we would make it more like a burden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so let's get on. Thank you, Mary. Let's get on with our interview. Uh, and uh, let me proceed that with just a couple of quick jokes. Okay, you got your joke hat on today. Uh, here's a couple. Did you hear about the invisible man who married the invisible woman? Well, their kids were nothing to look at. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you fix a tuba? How do you fix a tuba? With a tuba glue. <laughs> and how do you clean a tuba? With a tuba toothpaste. <laughs> ah, yes we go. So... <laughs> oh, folks, there'll be more great jokes like that in our as we go along today. But first, we're going to get started with our interview with Carol. Carol Mountain is our guest today, and uh, she promises to have some interesting things to tell us about her life, and we would like to know more. So, Mary, get us started. All right, Carol, welcome. Thank you. Um, I thought knowing Carol for quite a few years now, because we both lived over at... Uh, Park Lane, and knowing some of the activities she was involved in, I thought it would be interesting to um, uh, quiz her a little bit about some of it. So, but we'll start out like we usually do with the background uh, and knowing where you were born. I was born uh, in East Waterloo, uh, out on a little acreage. I've always lived out on a farm or an acreage, and my dad worked for the Illinois Central Railroad, but he also, uh, we rented farms, and he would come home and have to go out in the fields, which us as girls had to do too. But, and even after I was married, we still lived out in the country until uh, probably about 10 years ago, and then we decided to move into town. So what school did you go to when you were in the country? Well, in the country, I was over at Cedar Number 3 in Dewar, Iowa. I don't know where Dewar is at. Dewar? But, oh, you know where Dewar is at? <laughs> How do you okay. spell that? D-E-W-A-R. Dewar. And it's off from the old Highway 20 going to uh, uh, Jessup. Okay. And you turn and go towards Dunkerton. And okay. it's between there and Dunkerton. Okay. And uh, uh, I was there, and then we moved over... Um, on the west side, on Shawless Road, 
and I went to, um, no, I'm sorry, I went to Pointer Number over there and Cedar in, in uh, over here on the west side. Okay. And then after eighth grade, then I went into East Junior and East High, graduated okay. from East High. Okay. Even though I was on the west side well, of, of the river. Well, how'd that turn My out? mother graduated from the East High, okay. and my two older sisters graduated from East High, so I decided I wanted to, too. And at that time, we had to a neighbor man come along with his car and would take, pick us up and take us over to oh, East High. So okay. I was just going to ask how you got there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to ride the school bus. Uh -uh. And then my dad, working at Illinois Central, would stop by after work and pick us up and bring us home. Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. so. You had two older sisters? Two older sisters. At the time going to East mm -hmm. High? Okay. My, my two older sisters are still alive. Okay. One's 93 and one's 91. That's wow. wonderful. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And where are they located? They're at the Western Home. Oh, both of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you go over there to see them quite a bit. I was over to see one yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So you three girls grew up on a farm. Well, and then I had a younger brother and a younger sister, but they both passed. Okay. Yeah. Did you give a lot of chores to do on the farm? Oh, yes. Yeah, that was one thing my sister talked about when I was there a week ago up in the Western Home. Said we'd always come home from work when he Dad would bring us home. He'd say, okay, girls, get your clothes changed. we got to go out and pick up corn or we got to feed this or feed that. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> we had chores. Hmm. You had animals? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cows, pigs, horses. Mm -hmm. I don't think we had any sheep at that time, okay. but yeah. And chickens, all kinds of chickens, ducks, geese, and all oh, that yeah. goes on a farm. Cats and dogs. Yes, <laughs> yes, cats and dogs. So then after you graduated, mm -hmm. did you get a job or go to school? After I graduated, I got a job, and uh, I worked there, uh, and I got married in, in 53, and my husband was uh, in the Korean War. Okay. So then I stayed at home, but then I worked at uh, uh, a company in town. And then uh, after he come home, well, then I stopped working. Mm -hmm. But then, and I don't know how far you want me to go with this right now, but then uh, we had six children. Wow. And so, yeah. And then uh, when the last one was in school, I decided I'd go to work. And we went to the Walnut Ridge Baptist Academy, so mm -hmm. I got a job in the office there and worked there for 12, 14 years Good. Ooh, yeah. before they were all gone mm -hmm. out of school. So you were there when the kids were going to that mm -hmm. school? They'd take oh, them in neat. and bring them home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's very good. What did you have for children, boys and girls? And we had five girls and one boy. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Three girls, a boy, and then, then two more girls. And are they all living? They're all living. Yeah. Okay. The boy, our only boy's down in Augusta, Georgia. He's coming home this weekend. Wonderful. Uh, and then uh, I for, have a, for a visit. Well, it's kind of a sad story. Oh. His best friend passed away, and his funeral is in Omaha. And oh. so I have a daughter that lives in Omaha. So he's going to go to to the funeral and then stop by on the way home. Oh, okay. So we'll get to see him again. Very good. Very good. But we were also foster parents to nine foster children. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes three at a time. So uh, uh, we got a little boy right from the hospital that he was Downs. He was to be adopted, and he they didn't want him. So we uh, took him, and we raised him until he was 41 years old. Wow. He passed away. it will be 10 years June 1st of this year. Wow. Oh. That's so good. So we got our second boy. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, that, I always think when you take in those foster children, you've got to be so kind. Yeah. Such. He, and he was the sweetest little guy you ever saw. Mm -hmm. yeah. not, a, not a mean bone in his body. Sure. Did he go to school? He went to River Hills. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he went through there until he was 21. And then uh, uh, he went to, I can't think of the name of what it is right now. Anyhow, it's up on University Avenue where sure. they take them and try and teach them a little. Yeah, I know where the, yeah. I know what the kind of a sheltered study. workshop sort yeah. of thing. Kind of. Okay. Why can't I think of that? I had I to go pick him up every <laughs> take him and yeah, pick him I, up. I know idea. what you mean. Yeah. I know yeah. the place anyhow, too. Yeah. yeah. And in the meantime, uh, did you ever move to town? 
off the well, farm? Well, just, just uh, like we lived 37, or 37 years out on the corner of Kimball and Schrock. And then uh, my husband and I decided, you know, we got to sell this. And Well, Landmark Commons at that time was just being built, so we uh, thought we wanted to move into there, which we they were building it. So we went and picked out a room and everything and put our acreage up for sale. We had a small acreage. And um, we couldn't sell it then. And they called Landmark Commons and called and said, you know, all of our units have been sold. There's someone interested in one. Would you be willing to sell yours, you know. So we said, sure, go ahead. So then we uh, put still the acreages for sale and it finally did sell. So then we moved on a condo over on West 4th Street until my husband passed away. It was six years ago in last November. And then uh, I decided, well, I don't need this four bedroom condo. So, <laughs> yeah. so I decided to well, come into Friendship Village over in Park Lane. So you had heard about Friendship Village beforehand? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We right. had several friends, you know, from out in the Orange area. That's where I come from. And Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't a hard decision to make that you mm -hmm. knew, and you knew about life care. Mm-hmm. That was one thing that that yeah. both when my husband was alive is that we wanted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your husband's name was? Don. Don. Mm-hmm. Don yep. Mountain. Yep. Yep. And what did he do? What he was worked, his? He worked at Deers. John after, Deere. Yeah. After he got out of the service, he worked for Deers for 30, I don't know, 35, 37 years, somewhere in the 30s right. there. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people we interview have an association oh, yeah. with John Deere. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. That's wonderful. That industry has really done well for Waterloo. Yeah. We enjoyed our acreage because we had the kids and they, we yep. had ponies or, how, or our horses and they belonged to 4-H and we had sheep at that time and and so we just thought no better place than an acreage to raise Absolutely. six children. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd like to know how many times have you been a grandmother? Ah, I knew probably you would ask that. Okay. I got 15 grandchildren, which Whoa. aren't. I mean, a couple of my children aren't married or don't have children. Okay. So anyhow, and then um, I thought, well, how many great-grand? Well, I just had the 29th and the 25th of March of great-grandchildren. Oh. I've got another one due in July, so I'll have 30. 29 30. Oh, I'll have 30, 30. great-grandchildren. Like oh. Great-grandchildren. <laughs> great oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, rattle off all their names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how long is this on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. That is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That yeah. is wonderful. Yep. And, and not all your kids are married, so... No. Okay. <laughs> wow. They could keep coming for quite right. a while. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm. I've got one that's not married, but, I mean, I've got grandchildren that are not married, too. So, I mean, sure. greats would keep coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. <laughs> and yeah. do a lot of them live around here? The great-grandchildren and the grandchildren... Uh, yes, some live here in Waterloo, Cedar Falls, uh, some down in Cedar Rapids, and uh, the, then the Omaha, mm -hmm. three of them in Omaha. And then my son, like being down in Augusta, his two sons live down there, mm -hmm. so don't see them very often. Mm -hmm. But around yeah. here, you probably have company coming and going oh, yeah. all the time, or you go yeah. to their places. Yeah. There's birthdays to Marriages. celebrate. Uh, Marriages. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to <laughs> picture a family reunion, how big a place you'd need for yeah. all those... <laughs> I don't think the cold would be big enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. The um, event center might be. Oh, yes, yeah. that might be. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. See all the things we learn about the people that we interview. <laughs> and I want to bring up her gardening. Ah. She is a flower and gardener person. Yeah. I remember yeah. when we were um, at Park Lane and we had our garden area out there. She was out there about every day working in her in flowers, in and garden. I think you had tomatoes, and you had all kinds of things growing. Yes, carrots. I had carrots in the garden. Yeah, the, and you know, the the plots weren't that big, so you couldn't put a lot. And I know we liked tomatoes real well, and we'd always, you know, I'd can tomatoes and things like that. So, yeah. And then I'd put some few flowers in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Living out on acreages and that, you know, on the farm, was, you love doing that type of thing. So I know. And it's, uh. it's hard so, to give up. Yeah. We have one resident here who has a balcony. He's on the balcony yeah, side. Yeah. And he had yeah. come off of a farm, and he still brought his farm to town because he has buckets up there, and he raises <laughs> corn. And 
flowers and yeah. all kinds of things growing. It has like I know a who you're talking about. Yes, actually. right. And I think I do too. <laughs> and, like a camouflage uh-huh. up there yeah. of all that. But it's wonderful because it keeps him busy. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. with all the things. And do and you? It's do hard you have, to take the farm and out of a person. It is. And into town. <laughs> do you have your little garden over there at Park Lane? That not anymore. Yeah, I could, but you know, I didn't. No. I yeah. don't know. I don't go over at all. Yeah. I just have a few f- plants in my window. Right. In my, okay. That's yeah. okay. Hard mm-hmm. to give up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another feature that I wanted to talk about, when you lived at Park Lane, mm-hmm. you were acquainted with Lydia mm-hmm. and the lady that had Chai, mm-hmm. the dog Chai. I forget mm-hmm. what her name was. Chai. The, do- uh, the lady. Anyway, she had this, yeah. she was blind and she mm-hmm. had a... Seeing a service dog, dog. a service uh-huh. dog mm-hmm. named Chai, mm-hmm. and uh, then after and Lydia took care of Chai mm-hmm. a lot, took mm-hmm. him out for running and and all that kind mm-hmm. of looked after the dog, and after uh, the lady passed away, it was well, what do we do with Chai? And your very gracious daughter took the dog to her farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's where he is. Yeah. Yep. He's still he's still alive and he's doing fine and yeah, and uh, she's brought him over a couple of times when Lydia was living here. Yet mm-hmm. we brought him over and took him up to Lydia's and she when she she moved over you know to the yes. lodge yes. and I helped her a little bit there and she says when you can would you bring Chai over to see me again? And he said we would do that this summer when it gets tonight. Right, right. and, and Chai so, probably yeah. still remembers. Her. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, Such a same. wonderful dog. Oh, wasn't Everybody it? loved Chai. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 He was kind yeah. of our resident dog. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. used to play with that little bitty snappy dog. <laughs> Joyce's dog? Joyce's dog. <laughs> Joyce's dog. Yeah. 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 I suppose they got along. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they seem did. to. Yeah. 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 So. And then your daughter that comes, one daughter has a couple dogs yes. and she comes, and yeah. they're very nice, friendly dogs. Yeah, and she's the one that's not married and lives in Ankeny. Okay. She'll be coming this Saturday. Or, and so, yeah, she brings the dogs, too, and and uh, they're nice dogs. Yes, they, they are. Having problems, so. yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let me interrupt here today and just uh, bring us all back to focus for a second or two on on the housekeeping department who is our sponsor for this podcast and once again we we just want to say that we appreciate their friendly manner and their their effort at keeping us clean and and uh, well not me personally clean but my <laughs> my room clean and making my bed I, I appreciate that and uh, so uh, so our hats off to the housekeeping department and keep up the good work. And uh, let me also venture, as long as I have the microphone here, let me venture into another joke or two. All right, let's see. Here's a co- interesting question. Was Cinderella upset when her photos did not arrive in the mail? Was she upset? No, no, no. She comforted herself with the song, Someday my prince will come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, that's not a real <laughs> knee slapper. That's no, more. Of a, I no, no. Okay. <laughs> I read a little joke about, speaking of Cinderella, they said, Why did she, if, if she wore those shoes and she danced in those shoes yeah. and they fit her foot, why did she lose a slipper? Why did she lose one? Because she was. Jumping down the stairs and one came off. Okay. That court, yeah, that's my recollection of the movie. Okay. But, that question was asked so, yeah. the other day. They why said, not why did her shoe come off? <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know. Because <laughs> she, wanted the, know. she yeah. wanted the prince to find it mm-hmm. and find her. There's probably a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, there probably is. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right. Just a couple of other here points. Um, Children seldom misquote, you know. They usually repeat word for word what you shouldn't have told them. Yeah. Okay. And children are okay. honest like that. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, the world needs more warm hearts and fewer hot heads. Yes, that's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> and here's the last one of this one. Um, fear... Fear is a reaction, 
and courage is a decision. That's from Winston Churchill. I just read that recently. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a good thought. Mm -hmm. Fear is a reaction. I mean, there's a lot of things to be fearful about mm -hmm. in our world these days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Courage is a decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get back to our to our great guest here. Yes. Carol? Yeah. And, uh, How long were you married to Don? 63 and a half years. Wonderful. Yeah. That's oh. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, you had a good long mm -hmm. marriage. How did you meet him? Well, we lived out in the country, and uh, it was a little, well, Millerdale is a little settlement there that's, <laughs> no, no stores, nothing in there, just some people. And At an he, intersection, about? <laughs> about, just about, there was yeah. train tracks that went through, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, we were invited to his cousin's birthday party, which was down the railroad tracks, ways in another house down there and at that time being his cousins he had come out from town and uh, they were also at the birthday party of course so this is where we met okay oh. and then he pursued it from him and by the way my sister married his brother oh so oh. brothers married sisters and right. that's the one that's still alive in in uh with the Western home. Mm -hmm. okay. Her and her husband are still alive. Well, 90, 91 and 92. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So they've been married a really long yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. it love at first sight? I think maybe it was for him. I didn't see him because oh. he was out on the porch watching me through the oh. window, which he told me later. Okay. And okay. so... He had his eye on you. <laughs> wonder yeah. who that good-looking gal was. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think I was only 13 at the time. Oh, oh cause, my. Because we couldn't go out. At that time, but mm -hmm. with my sister, with his brother, well, we could go with them then. Mm -hmm. So we oh, did until I was convenient. sixteen, and then yeah. I could go out alone with him. Then you were allowed to go yeah. out. Now, how hmm. that has changed yeah. nowadays. Yeah, right. <laughs> so anyhow, so you've yeah. lived here about what six years or so? Yeah, across the way, two years or so. Well, just four, I guess. It was two years here at Christmas, the day before Christmas, we moved in here. Okay. First thing up in my apartment was a Christmas tree. It was already all together, so we yeah. just stuck it in front of the window. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they had our first Christmas here. So what did you like what do you like about living here? Oh, well, goodness sakes. Now you should ask me that some time ago. Well, I think everything about it, I mean, you know, you can come and go now that COVID is you know, I still have my car, so I can come and go. And, okay. of course, I like the housekeeping and the food brought to my door mm -hmm. and uh, just all of those things that mm -hmm. are new when you okay. have your own home. Right. It's a whole so, change of mm -hmm. atmosphere, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, we really yeah. like it. We yeah. really get yeah. into it here. Yeah. And there's always the activities that we can take part yeah. in, and you have undertaken a humongous activity. Tell us about that. <laughs> Well, the 6,000-piece puzzle of Noah's Ark. And I think somebody yesterday, one of the maintenance men, come through and was looking at it, and he says, I think maybe you've got it about two-thirds done. And I said, yeah, I think so. So I'm down there. If I'm not in my apartment, I'm usually down there working on this. So, And when it's done, it's to go over to It Takes a Village, daycare center and be put on a wall in their uh, sick room over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the plan, so we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that'll be quite an undertaking yeah. to get it all glued together mm -hmm. yeah. on a, the big board that mm -hmm. it's on. Mm -hmm. So what are the dimensions? It's four by six. Four six, by six, six feet. Six thousand pieces. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You've not been down there to see no. it? No. Yeah. Oh. Just down there. Yeah, you got to go okay. down there and see right. it. Yeah, and even put a piece or two in, which would make me happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried one day, but I couldn't find a place to put some of it. I sat there and worked and worked. I just couldn't get a piece in there. But yeah. I enjoyed looking at yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It'll to. be pretty when it's all together. And my only hope is that all the pieces are there. Yeah. Uh, the uh, puzzle had never been opened, but then with so many people coming in and out and helping, you never know. So, okay. yeah. I've instructed the housekeepers and all to make certain before they vacuum or anything underneath the table Ooh. to look and see if there's any pieces, <laughs> pieces on the floor. Right. 
And there right. has been a time. And those two, pieces yeah. have to be. Yes. Yeah. Really. Yeah. They're not real big. They're not, yeah. big. They're not real big. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's gonna be gorgeous when it gets yeah, done, though. I think so. Uh, do you have any idea where you're gonna have it framed at? Well, the only thing here, it's so big and everything, we're going to glue it on the on the board. Mm -hmm. And then I thought maybe just have the men just put a frame around it. on the board there. Yeah. I don't know. We'll wait Try and to see. get it all constructed yeah. on the same board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it'll be yeah. Carol Mountain's puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was not what I wanted when I started. I thought it would be something that the whole, so many people like to do puzzles they around do. here. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, you know, they could all come and put help with it and it'd be done in no time. But I don't have too many willing okay. workers or helpers or whatever I think you they found them. it was a challenge <laughs> yeah. and maybe a challenge yeah. that they weren't quite up to. They they like the littler ones. So yeah, and, and we'll the, keep working at it. Two of my daughters are very good at doing puzzles they like it and the one candace that i was talking about will be coming in this weekend and we'll spend some there, time down there, there so we're helping me okay. out yeah maybe by christmas it'll be done i hope it will be done before that but i started at october 1st my my thought was it'd be nice to have it done by october 1st but right. we'll see right we'll see. i think okay. that might at least that be put happen. together you yeah. gotta almost have a you know a, a goal Rather yeah. than just let it. And we need yeah. to take a lot of pictures of it too before it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see about that. But yeah. yeah, you can take pictures all you want of the puzzle. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. it'll be transporting it over there. Yes. And getting it home. Yeah. That'll yeah. take something too. Yeah. But I think there, we've got some guys now that are really interested in carpentry and doing things like Good. that. So they probably will be able Good. to help you or help yeah. whoever to get yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And get it hung and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once it's glued together very securely, mm -hmm. I think it'll be okay to. I think so too. Work with that. Yeah. 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 Well, good luck on that part. <laughs> well, thank mm -hmm. you. I need it. <laughs> Here's an interesting thought. Seems true to me. People who do things that really count never take the time to count them. No, they That's don't. That's true. Mm. And the older you get. I can attest to this. The older you get, the fewer things are worth standing in line for. Right. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Nobody wants to stand in line anymore. No. Mm -hmm. Except mm -hmm. we have to stand in line to wait to go eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think as we grow older, our priorities just sort of get a little more Sick. focused. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just mm -hmm. all, instead of kind of all whatever, it's all more focused and what's important is important and what isn't. Who cares? Well, our right. priorities aren't quite as great as they used to be when we were younger. We had a lot of different prior priorities, and we worked really hard to accomplish them and get them done. Mm -hmm. And now we don't have that many priorities. And what we do have, we work on. Such wisdom coming out of this interview. Yes. It's great. It's great. And we are right at the close. So any last thoughts or comments from you, Carol? I've told you about everything, I guess. I don't know. I think it's I, been very, very interesting. <laughs> we really we appreciate it. We did have a motor home, and we took her, we were doing crafts and things like that. We would go around down to uh, different craft shows around with our motor home. And what kind of crafts so, did you do? Well, my husband was in woodworking, and he had a lot of woodworking. I'd done crocheting. Uh, we would bake things, and uh, we would go up, I think, uh, to Old Wine. We went down there. We went down to Wet's. Uh, uh, what chair and uh, just sometimes my mother and I had four sisters we would get together each one of them done something different and we'd have kind of like a garage sale only mm -hmm. it'd be a craft sale mm -hmm. and one sister done artificial arrangements of flowers oh. and uh, my mom was a crocheter and another one done toll painting and we just had about a little bit of everything. And you're a quilter also. Yes, and a quilter. You've had lots of quilts hanging outside your room. Yes. Yeah. I enjoy yeah, still, seeing yeah. those. <laughs> yeah, they're still hanging down there. So, yes. Yeah. And I'm not going to say anything about, I don't think, well, I guess it wouldn't matter right now. But we've made, uh, Vivian Weimer is in charge of making 72 wheelchair quilts, 36 okay. by 36. Okay. And uh, we would do the tops, and then we'd come to her, and she would put in the batting and the back, and then quilt it on her machine. So we 
sewed the tops together. Okay. Cool. And uh, our church is, uh, we've only got six quilters at our church, and they were involved in that too. So. 72, though, that's quite a... 72. Quite a, There's wow. 72 rooms over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had to make it the colors corresponding with the door, mm-hmm. colors of the door and the wall. So there was five different colors that we had to, uh, the quilts had to match the... So the quilt would just sort of stay with the, the room. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed as, to stay with the room. As time went on. Okay. Yeah. Will they be hung then? Uh, I think they was going to use them for wheelchairs, if in their wheelchairs, okay. to put them on that. Other than that, like a lap robe. Yeah, that's more or less what they are. And then also on the chair that's in the room that they sit in, mm-hmm. to when they're sitting down, to just put it over them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be so nice. Yeah. And did you pick out different patterns? Uh, Vivian did. Mm-hmm. Vivian Weimer, yeah. yeah. And then she said, "You can use your own patterns. Just, just be creative." Mm-hmm. So we've got some, we've got some nice ones. And did you go out and buy material or go out and get material? George Ann Butterfield that lives mm-hmm. up on the cove. Yep. She is a great quilter, and she's got all kinds of material up there. So we uh, um, went up there and picked through her things for some of them. Some mm-hmm. of our our church had some, and some uh, Vivian's friends had some, and yeah. We got them all done. So. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, well, listen, I hate to interrupt our conversation here, but it is time to close. All right. For today. We got to bring uh, it to a halt. We got to bring, I mean, Carol's kind of like so many others we've had, we could do a second installment. <laughs> right. Just to kind of get a more. We're only allowed a certain amount of time. So, uh, but thank you, Carol. You're for, welcome. For sharing today. And uh, so as. Any final thoughts from you, Mary? No, it's been a very good interview on this dark and dreary day. Yeah, it has been. So we've enjoyed Carol. And as we like to close, may the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. So goodbye for now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.